the most widely used multiple in the world. That's the P-E ratio. Everybody knows what the P-E ratio is, even people who might be novices in the market. But do they really know what the P-E ratio is? As we'll see in this session, there are widely varying definitions of what the price earnings of P-E ratio is. Some of those definitions make sense and some don't. And as we will see, when you use a P-E ratio, whether you like it or not, you're making all of the assumptions you were making when you did an intrinsic valuation. You're making assumptions about growth, assumptions about cash flows, assumptions about risk. The only difference is those assumptions are implicit rather than explicit, and that sometimes can get you into trouble. The last session, I laid out a four-step process for deconstructing multiples, and I thought I'd try the process out in the most widely used multiple in the world, which of course is the price earnings ratio, the P-E ratio. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to define P-E ratios, describe them, analyze them, and see if I can apply them. And the rubric we have for P-E ratios can be extended to any other multiple. So let's start the process. As I mentioned in the last session, the P-E ratio is internally consistent. The numerator is an equity value, and the denominator is an equity value as well. In fact, it's a one multiple that most investors think they know how it's computed. But do they? In fact, take a look at the P-E ratio. The numerator is usually the current price. Yeah, that, that's usually a consensus, though sometimes you see an average price, a moving average price used, but it's usually the current price. It's in the denominator that you get the real action. And here are the choices. You can divide by earnings per share in the most recent fiscal year. That's called current P-E. You can divide by earnings per share in the last four quarters. That's called trailing P-E. You can divide by earnings per share expected over the next four quarters. That's forward P-E. Or you can divide by earnings per share in the year 2022, which is really, really forward P-E. Why would you do that? Desperation drives you to do strange things. If you're an equity research analyst tracking biotech companies and they're all losing money, here's what you do. You estimate the expected earnings way out in the future, and when it turns positive, you divide the price today by that earnings, and you turn around and say, that stock is cheap. It's trading at six times 2022 earnings. You can divide earning by earnings per share before extraordinary items or after extraordinary items. Partially diluted, fully diluted primary earnings per share. Earnings per share before option expensing, after option expensing. What I'm trying to say is you take any company, you could probably write 15, 20, 25 different numbers, all claiming to be P ratios at any point in time. What should you take away from it? The next time you sit across a table from somebody and start talking about P ratios, before you start talking about the numbers, make sure you're talking about the same thing. Each of you should put down your definition of P ratio on the table and see if it matches up before you get too involved. So definitionally, price earnings ratios pass the test. Just make sure that it's defined in exactly the same way for the two people involved in the discussion. Second step in the process, and I said this was a statistical process. Here's what I do at the start of every year. I take every company for which I can find a market price. Every company. I don't select the companies that I like, I just pick every company. And for every company, I try to compute a P price earnings ratio. You're saying, why try? You're going to see in a minute that not every company will have a P-E ratio available for it. I compute these P-E ratios by companies, and then I draw a histogram. I don't know how much you remember your STAT 101 class, but a histogram is not sophisticated. You just count the number of companies with P-E ratios between 0 and 4, 4 and 8, 8 and 12, and so on, and you put in a distribution. So here's my distribution of P-E ratios at the start of 2013. But it's pretty much looked like this every year that I've done it for the 20 plus years that I've been doing this distribution. The peak is to the left, the tail is to the right. It's not a symmetric distribution. The lowest value of P-E ratio can take is zero. The highest value, who knows? In fact, here are the implications because the distribution is asymmetric. I computed the standard statistics for this distribution. I started with the two numbers we always do with any distribution, the average and the standard deviation. And the average number, for current PE for U.S. stocks is staggering. It's over 80. But before that scares you too much, keep going down the table, and you'll see a median value for the PE ratio. Notice it's about 16.5. That is a much more meaningful number to focus on if you're looking at PE ratios. In fact, in general, when you use multiples, avoid the use of averages. Those averages are going to be skewed by the fact that the outliers all lie in one direction. It makes far more sense to talk about medians and averages when you talk about multiples in general. Notice also that out of the 7,000 plus firms, only about 3,000 plus firms have P-E ratios for them. What happened to the rest? Well, this is a simple explanation. For a company to have a P-E ratio, the earnings per share has to be positive. So for those companies where the earnings per share are negative, they drop out of the sample. So what? 
It matters because you create bias in your sample by the companies you eliminate as much as the companies you leave in. The companies that you eliminate because they have negative earnings will tend to be younger, riskier companies. And that's a danger whenever you take statistics of a subsample that is not an unbiased sample. In fact, as you go from current PE to trailing PE to forward PE, you lose more companies. You know why? To get a forward PE, I need expected earnings per share in the next four quarters. And the only companies for which I have that available are companies that are tracked by analysts. So any company that is not tracked by analysts, I lose for my sample. We introduce bias in the most subtle ways, based upon the multiples we pick. So next time you pick a multiple to do evaluation, think as much about the companies you will lose by using that multiple as much as the companies that will stay in your sample. Now here's a third and final characteristic I want to list about these multiples. Not only are they asymmetric, not only does it throw off the median and the mean and, and the difference between those two numbers, you look across the world, it's amazing how much market share in common. Again, at the start of every year, here's what I do. I take every publicly traded company listed globally for which I can get a P-E ratio, and then I put the distributions on top of each other so I can compare the distributions. I break them down into subgroups. I have US companies, European companies, emerging market companies, Japanese companies, and Australia, New Zealand, and Canada form their own subgroup. Look across the subgroups. Across the subgroups, you see the same kind of distribution. Peak to the left, tail to the right. The median values do vary across the subgroups, but not in a way that might be predictable or easy to explain away. It is true that the U.S. had the highest median PE in 2013. It's true that Japan had the lowest median PE. But it's also true that emerging markets had a higher median PE than European markets do. Strange if you think about it, and think, if you think about emerging markets as riskier than European stocks, but it shows you how the line between developed and emerging markets has blurred, especially over the last four or five years. So if you look at the distribution, keep in mind the asymmetric nature of the distribution, how it throws off your statistics, and how much more companies share in common globally than they have as differences.